One of my favorite characters in the Bible is the Apostle Paul. And um, my favorite character is actually uh, one that Paul mentored, uh, which is Barnabas. And uh, another one is Apollos. So these are guys that wouldn't be what they were in our history if it wasn't for Paul. And so Paul is significant for many reasons. And one of them is uh, he wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Uh, no, no, no small task. Um, Paul was uh, obviously uh, one of the greatest uh, revivalists, uh, part of the Christian uh, church history that literally explained and broke down the different pillars of the gospel, whether it's sanctification, justification, uh, salvation, all of these real fundamental um, pillars that you and I as followers of Jesus need to know. Paul is responsible. Uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible, which is a letter he wrote to the Ephesians. Uh, I love Ephesians. Ephesians just really breaks down our identity in Christ, who we were prior to meeting Jesus, and who we ought to be when we come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Ephesians is the letter that gives us that sense of purpose and meaning when it comes to our identity. So Paul is significant, to say the least. But before Paul was Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus. And this, the same zeal and passion that we see from Paul when he writes all of these letters to the churches is the Saul that we see before he encounters Jesus. So as you can imagine, he starts to hear that Christianity is, is, is rampant, is growing, and as a Jew, and as a traditional Jew, because Paul was a Pharisee, so he knew the law, he studied the law, and he felt that this Christianity thing, the, the, the people of the way, as they called it, um, was, was a direct assault to what God intended. And his zeal got the best of him, and he started to write letters to the authorities to give him permission to begin to kill all those Christians. And he did. He received the letters, he had permission to kill Christians, and there was a lot of bloodshed because of Saul, who later becomes Paul. And I don't know about you, but if I'm thinking at that time, I'm a Christian, this guy Saul is killing a lot of my friends and my family, and now he becomes a Christian, he's Paul, and now we're on the same side. I don't know how I would feel about that. <laughs> I mean, you're responsible for killing my friends. You're responsible for killing uh, potentially some of my family. But yet, God gets a hold of Saul's heart. He knocks him off his high horse, uh, literally speaking. He becomes blind for three days until uh, God gives him instructions to go to the prophet Ananias' house. He receives his sight back, and he just gets this calling to be the voice of the gospel for the New Testament church. Um, we later see in history that he actually goes over to um, the, the Far East and in the desert for 12 years and he studies scripture and he receives revelation, which is why we get so much uh, um, literature from Paul explaining all these things. It wasn't just that he studied, no, he, he had experience with God and um, his experience was so deep and relevant to you and I as men, that it, it goes to show that if we have a passion and a zeal for what's right, God will open the doors for us to communicate that. And, and maybe it's not necessarily doing a video like this, or maybe it's not pastoring a church or being uh, involved in the church necessarily. Maybe it's in your sector. Maybe uh, you're a physician and you're hearing this and you're like, how can I do what Paul did you have plenty of opportunities. Your fellow doctors, the, the nursing staff, the people that you work with, just being Jesus with skin on. You show up representing the kingdom of God by being that person that God has redeemed, has restored, and has given the fruit of the Spirit. So you, you show patience, you show kindness, you show gentleness, and all of these things that come with the Spirit of God. 
Maybe you're an attorney and you're constantly battling in court and your, your, your job is to argue. And, and you're like, how do, I, how do I represent Christ? Well, you, you, you argue for truth and for righteousness. God is all about truth and righteousness. Um, whatever it is that you do, you do it for the glory of God. And you do it because God has called you to do it and has gifted you with the gifts that you have specifically for you to use them for his glory and to expand the kingdom. And so Paul was so used by God. In fact, um, there, there's been a quote going around that somebody tweeted that if Paul were alive today and saw the condition of the church in the USA, we would be getting another letter. That's significant to the character that Paul had as it relates to communicating the importance of how you and I show up in this world. We need to be followers of Jesus, imitators of Paul, where we fight for what's right and we fight for the kingdom of God is near and his righteousness is at hand. And so you and I have a commitment, a calling to do what's right and to have the character like Paul did.